Hi guys, this is Kwame bringing you more dataset insights. In today's video, I am going to put together something along the lines of a portfolio consisting of an SQL, Excel, and Tableau project components, all three of which are interrelated and based on the same dataset. More precisely, I am going to create a comprehensive sales dashboard for the executive team at the theoretical bicycle retail company I work for, first by pulling out the relevant data from the company's database using SQL and then designing a well-structured and dynamic dashboard using Excel and Tableau. I will be following the five steps involved in all data analytics projects when putting together this portfolio. But first, let me give you a brief overview of what the end results will look like. The first thing I would do is tap into the company's relational database by writing an SQL script to generate a detailed data set that provides me with all the data and information I need to put together a comprehensive and dynamic sales dashboard for the executive team. Next, I am going to import the SQL generated data set into Excel and then use pivot tables to generate a dynamic dashboard like the one you see here. And then I am going to connect the Excel data sheet that contains the SQL generated data set to Tableau and use the information, the data, to generate this visually pleasing and dynamic dashboard for management. Let's begin. Data analysis follows a rigorous step-by-step -step process that involves one, understanding the problem, defining the business or project goals, and laying out a plan to find a solution. Two, collecting and gathering data from various sources based on set priorities. Three, Cleaning the data to remove unwanted, redundant, and missing values that may impede analysis. 4. Exploring and analyzing the data using business intelligence tools, data visualization, data mining techniques, and or predictive modeling. 5. Interpreting the results to gain insights. For the first step, I need to know what exactly management wants. In this case, they want to know the condition of the sales activities within the company and gain insights into the various trends happening in the sales volume over the 2016 to 2018 period. They probably also want to know the revenues per region, per store, per product category, and per brand. A list of the top customers and sales reps could also prove insightful. Having determined what their needs and goals are, I need to figure out how to provide that information in the most organized and digestible way. I figured that a simple report will be too long and unmanageable for them to use. My job is to make their life as easy as possible after all. So the best course of action is to provide them with a comprehensive dashboard with Excel, Tableau, or Power BI one that clearly lays out all the metrics they require and can easily access. Although only one would likely suffice, I will create both an Excel and Tableau dashboard for this project. Now that I know what to deliver, it's time to collect and gather the necessary data and put together a data set. I know that the data can be found from the company's relational database and can be retrieved using SQL. So let's do that. I need to write an SQL script that generates a data set with fields consisting of the order ID, the customer's first and last name, the customer's city and state, the order date, sales volume, revenue, product name, product category, brand name, store name, and sales rep. These fields are scattered across nearly nine separate but related tables in the bike store's database. So I will need to perform a series of direct and indirect table joins to generate the data set. For example, 
I will get the order ID and order dates from the sales.orders table, the customer's name, city, and state from the sales.customers table, and the revenue and sales volume from the sales.order items table. But I can't simply add them to the query randomly. Some tables can't be directly connected to others, but instead can only be added after certain tables are included in the query. This will make more sense as I write the script. This is going to be a long script. So to minimize the occurrence of errors, I am going to write it piece by piece. Let's start by adding the order ID, the customer's first and last name, the customer city, state, and the order date. I want the, the first name and last name of the customers to be under one field instead of two separate fields. So I am going to use the concat function to do that. The order ID and order date are contained in the uh, sales order table. The customer's first name, last name, city, and state are contained in the sales customers table. I am going to combine these two tables on their customer ID field. Now I need to specify which tables each of these fields belongs to. So the order ID field belongs to the sales orders table. So ORD, the first name, last name, city, and state belong to the sales customers table. So and the order date belongs to the sales orders table. We also want to know the sales volume and the total revenues generated. Now these two fields will take the form of functions. So with the sales volume, it will be sum quantity. And I am going to give it the alias total units. With the revenue, it's going to be sum quantity times list price. And I am going to give it the alias revenue. The quantity and the list price fields are contained in the sales order items table. And I can join the sales order items table to the sales orders table using the order ID field.
now I need to sp specify that the quantity field belongs to the sales order items table so ITE and the same goes for the list price because I now have two functions in the query I need to group the other fields in order for the script to work so group by We also want to know the name of the products that were purchased. And this product name field can be found in the production products table. I will be able to join the production products table to the sales order items table using the product ID field contained in both table. Let me give the uh, the concat first name and last name an alias. Let's call it customers. Management will likely also want to know the category of the products that were purchased. The category name field is contained in the production categories table and this table can be joined with the product productions table using the category ID field. We also want to know the store at which the sales took place. The store name field is contained in the sales stores table. And this table can be joined with the sales orders table using the store ID field.
finally, we also want to know the sales rep that made the sale. I am using the concat function because like the customers, I want the first and last names of the sales rep to be contained in just one field instead of uh, in two separate fields. And the first and last name fields are contained in the sales staffs stable. And I will be able to join this table to the sales orders table using the staff ID field. So let me look everything through once to see if there's any mistakes. And we're set to go. So this should be our query. Excellent. So we have our data set. We have a field for the order IDs. Another one containing the first and last names of the customers. Another one for the the city where the customers live, as well as the state. We have the order dates. We have the total units of bikes sold per order. We have a field for the revenues generated per order. A field for the, the names of the products that were purchased. A field for the brands of the bikes that were purchased a field for the store at which the sales took place. And finally, a field for the sales rep that made the sale. Step three of the data analysis process requires cleaning the data to remove unwanted, redundant, and missing values that may impede analysis. Looking at my data set, everything appears to look okay. Um, I seem to have all the values, all the data that I need. There are no redundancies and there are no unwanted fields. So everything looks okay, at least in SQL. Issues may arise when I import the data set into Excel or Tableau, but for now, I am okay with the way things look. That said, let's head to Excel to begin our analysis. So I have just created a new workbook and called it bike stores. There are two ways I can use the data set that I just created in Excel. The first way is to simply copy and paste the data set into a worksheet and then move up from there. The second option is to connect the entire Excel workbook to the company's database and then import the data set directly into a worksheet. The second option effectively forms a connection between the workbook and the database so that whatever changes are made to the database are automatically reflected in the Excel version of the data set, thus sparing me the trouble of having to manually update the Excel version of the data set whenever an update is made. For that reason, I will be going with the second option for this exercise. To import 
a data set from an external source into Excel. All I have to do is click on the data tab, then click on get data, then from database, select SQL server database, because that's where the data set is contained. Next, I need to input the server that the database is connected to, which in this case is this. Then I have the option of giving the database a name. So I am simply going to call it the exact same thing as the company's database, Bike Stores. Click on Advanced Options. Now, instead of importing every single table in the database, I want to instead import a data set generated from the query that I wrote earlier. So I am going to input that query into this input box. And then click OK. Next, I am presented with a preview of what the data set will look like in Excel. And everything looks okay, including the headings and the overall structure of the data. So I'm okay with it. So I am going to load and there we have it. The exact same data set that we had in the, S the SQL Manager Studio imported into Excel. What I want to do next is to quickly look over the data set to see if there are any redundancies, any missing data, any missing fields. So all the fields appear to be present. And we have the same number of records. Everything looks good. So I'm just going to minimize the screen a bit. And we're all set. So from here, we want to begin analyzing the data. And to do that, I need to create two new sheets, one for the pivot tables that I will be creating and one for the executive dashboard that I will be putting together for management. So for sheet one, let's call it pivot tables. And for sheet two, let's call it dashboard. So that out of the way, we are ready to go. The first sets of information that I want to provide management are the total revenues per year, as well as the total revenues per month over the years that we are analyzing. And I am going to provide that information using pivot tables and pivot charts. To create a pivot table, all I have to do is go to insert, click on pivot tables, and then provide the table or data range. In this case, the, that range is query one. I click on OK. And then I put the revenue field in the values quadrant and the order date in the rows quadrant. Next, I want to group the years to only show years instead of quarters and months. So I don't want the quarters and I don't want the months. So that's it. That's our, our first pivot table. Next, I want to create a second pivot table, this time for the revenues per month over the three years. So it's going to be the same procedure. Insert pivot tables from table range. The range is query one. Okay. Put the revenues in the values quadrant 
and the order date in the Rose Quadrant. This time around, I want to group the years to show both the years and the months. So years and months. Now notice what happens when I click on OK. The changes that I made to the second, the second pivot table, the new pivot table, affects the first pivot table. And the reason for that is because both tables use the same data cache. When two tables use the same data cache, whatever changes you make to one table affects the other table exactly the same way. The way the solution around this problem is to decouple one of the tables from the data cache. So I need to use a different approach to create the second pivot table. So this approach calls for me to just click on any cell in the worksheet and then click or press Control D and then P on my keyboard to get a prompt allowing me to decouple the pivot table from the data cache. So this, I don't need to make any changes to this options list. Everything looks good. All I have to do is just click on next and then provide the table range, which is the exact same table range as the, as the first pivot table. So query one. And then it's asking me, your new report will use less memory if you base it on your existing report. So I don't want to base it on the existing report. I want it to be separate. So the answer, so I'm going to click on no. And then select the cell that I want the new pivot table to be inputted. So I want the cell and then click on finish. So revenues in the values quadrant and order date in the rows quadrant. So let's try it now. Let's see if I will be faced with the same problem. So group, I want the months and the years, not the quarters. And there you go. So we have two separate and distinct pivot tables. What I want to do now is to create charts from these pivot tables, starting with this one. To create a chart, all I have to do is go to insert and then select recommended charts. So for this one, I want a simple clustered column chart. That looks good. Let me put it over here. So I want to change the title to total revenues, total revenue. I want to bold the title. We don't need th this filter. We also don't need this one. We don't need the label or the legend. So delete. I want to change the numbers to currency with no decimal places. And I want to make the bars thicker. That looks good. That's chart number one down. Let's do the next one. So this one requires a bit more steps because I need to graph the individual years separately. So I have to go to insert. I want a line chart for this one and I have a blank, a blank chart. So I want to go to select data, add, and I, I want to first graph the data for the 2016 year. So 2016, the values that I want to graph are this data range. And I want to change the horizontal axis to reflect the months. So that's 2016 down time for 2017. So the same procedure, select data, add, we want 2017 this time, 
and the values we want to graph or I want to graph are this data range. Okay, and then change the horizontal axis to reflect the months. So that's 2016 and 2017 down. Finally, I want to add 2018. So and we want this data range. All right, change the horizontal axis. And we are done. Change the currency to change the numbers, the currency, no decimal places. And I want to see the legend. All right. So that's two charts we have, we have done. What I want to do now is to cut and paste these charts into our dashboard sheet. Now, before I align these charts, I want to first give our dashboard a banner. So let me merge let me first shrink the screen a little bit I want to merge these shells and I want to call this I want to I want the header to be executive that centered bold increase the font size to 28 change the background color to a kind of blue all right so I want to put the first I want to put the first chart here and I want to put the second chart over here. So that's two charts down. What I want now is a chart showing the revenues per state or a revenue breakdown for each state, as well as a chart showing the revenue breakdown per store. The first chart will be a map chart, while the second chart will be a pie chart. Insert pivot tables. So I want the state in the rows quadrant and the revenues in the values quadrant. Now the thing with map charts is that you can't create one using pivot tables. So what I need to do is copy this pivot table and then make it a regular table. Let me bold this. We don't need the grand totals. 
So that's what we need. And then from here, I can go to insert maps and then here we go. So revenue per state. And I want to put the legend at the bottom right there. So that's our map chart. The legend is a color gradient. So the darker the state, the higher the revenue. The lighter the state, the lower the revenue. New York has the highest number of sales or the highest revenue, while Texas has the lowest revenue. So I am going to cut this chart and paste it into our dashboard. I want to now create a pivot table showing the revenues per store. And that's our pivot table. So I want to create a pivot chart, a pie chart for this pivot table. So we're going to go with a simple pie chart. Revenue per store, bold. We don't need this and we don't need the legend. That's because I want to format the cells to show the so I want to show the percentage and I want to show the store name. all of them change the color That's it. So I'm going to cut it and paste it in our dashboard. So that's four charts down. The next set of charts include one showing the revenues per brand and one showing the revenues per product category.
For both charts, I want them to be a bar chart sorted from highest to lowest in value. The horizontal values are a bit too squish, so I'm going to space them out a little bit. Let's try 700,000. That's better. And that's it, so cut and paste. Finally, I want a chart showing the top 10 customers by revenue, as well as a chart showing our sales reps by revenue. Both charts will be column charts. So I want the customers in this row and then we are done. So next I want to sort the values from largest to smallest.
and then filter the values to only show the top 10 customers. So top 10 by revenue. And there we have it. So what I want now is to create the chart. I want a clustered bar chart. Delete this. Delete this. Let's call it top 10 customers. We don't need this. Bold. Let's sort this from smallest to largest. Show the data labels. Change the currency to change the numbers to currency. No decimal places. Change your horizontal axis to currencies. No decimal places. Ch change the thickness of the bars to 65. Let's see how it looks. And change the color of the bars to a light green. All right. That's our top 10 customers charts down, cut, and then paste it in our dashboard, in the dashboard. Finally, the last chart, the revenues per, per sales rep. I'm going to put that over here. Insert pivot tables. So we want sales rep in the gross quadrant and revenues in the values quadrant. So for this one, the same type of chart. We want a simple column bar, bar chart. Revenue. Sort this from smallest to largest. We don't need the legend. Let's show the data labels. Change the currency, change the numbers to currency. Change the horizontal axis to currency. That's it. Let's make the bars a bit thicker. Let's try 65. That looks good. Let's change the color of the bars to a light red. And that looks good. So I'm going to cut it and then paste it in my dashboard. So that's it. 
I have all the charts that I need for the dashboard, at least for now. What I want to do now is to make these charts interactive. And I am going to do that by using an Excel feature called slicers. A slicer provides a set of buttons that allow multiple pivot tables and pivot charts to be filtered easily, sparing me the trouble of having to click on each one of these charts one by one and then filter them individually to gain the insights that I am looking for. That's too much work. To create a slicer, all I have to do is click on the insert tab and then click on slicer. From here, I can select the items or fields that I want to filter the charts by. So in this case, I want to filter by the years, so order date, as well as the store name and the state. Let's start with these three. So okay, and here are my slicers. So for the year, for the year, I'm going to put it here on the left side of the dashboard. Resize it to fit. For the state, the same thing. And then for the store name, the same thing. So I want to filter the total revenues chart as well as the revenues per store, revenues per brand, revenues per product category, and the top 10 customers and revenues per sales rep charts by these slicers. To do that, I need to right click on the slicer and then click on report connections. And then from here, select all the charts that I want to filter using this slicer. So let's try it. So no, notice what happens when I click on 2016. This chart changes to reflect that. So all I see right now is only the revenue for the year 2016. The exact same thing is going to happen when I click on 2017 and 2018. If I want to reset, I click on this hourglass or funnel. Let's see what impact this filter has on the revenue per store. So to, let's see what happens when I click on 2018. The pie chart changes to reflect that. and so forth and so forth. So all the, all the charts in this dashboard are impacted by the changes made with this slicer. Now, I don't want this one here to be impacted. So let me, let me remove it from the connections. Right, so that one is done. I am going to do the exact same thing for all these other slicers. So for state, report connections, and just check mark all the charts. 
And then for Baldwin bikes or for the store names, the exact same thing. Report connections and then tick, tick all the charts. Now let's see what happens when I click on California. I get the annual performance for the state of California alone. New York, the exact same thing. So unfilter. Now let's try store by store. So let's see Baldwin bikes, the exact same thing. So I get the performance for Baldwin bikes alone. For roulette bikes, the exact same thing. And Santa Cruz bikes, the, same, the exact same thing. So on filter. I want to see the top 10 customers for the year 2017. So I'm going to go click on 2017. So Melanie Hayes was our most valuable customer while Marceline Boyer was our top seller. Let's see what, let's see, if, let's see the results for 2018. Pamela Newman was our top customer, while Venita Daniel was our top sales rep. So that's what I mean by interactivity. By using slicers, we have made the entire dashboard interactive, which will make it easier for management to gain the insights that they want without having to filter each chart individually. So that's pretty much it for our dashboard. So all I need to do right now is just to tidy up my dashboard a little bit and then we are done. So I am going to start off by removing this filter. Our first chart, the total revenue chart looks okay. So that's our revenue per month chart. The revenue per state and the revenue per store look okay to me, as does the revenue per brand and revenue per product charts. Top 10 customers chart looks okay. And so does the revenue per sales rep chart. So the charts look okay. Maybe the dashboard would look better if I remove the grid line. So view and then remove the grid line. And then I'm going to remove the borders of these charts. So Let's remove the border, none. Let's see how it looks. Looks good. Let's remove the border for this one. No line. The border for this one, no line. No line. All right, that looks, that looks pretty good. Looks very professional. What else do we need? Everything looks okay to me, right? So we have we have a chart for the total revenues, a chart for the revenues per month, a chart for the revenues per state, a chart for the revenues per store, revenue per per brand chart, as well as a revenue per product category chart. And finally we have a top ten customers chart and a revenue per sales rep chart. Let me remove the Let me remove the borders for this one and the borders for this one. So we are done. All right. So that's all for me, right? So all I can do right now is pass this dashboard on to management and ask them if they want anything else added to it. Perhaps they want more charts or perhaps they want additional slices. Who knows? All I can do is to ask rather than assume that this is all they need. Welcome to the Tableau section of this portfolio exercise. So far, I have generated a data set from the company's relational database using SQL and imported the data set into Excel to create an interactive dashboard. What I am going to do now is import the Excel version of that data set into Tableau and prepare a prettier, 
even more interactive dashboard for the executive team. Management will usually want either an Excel dashboard or a Tableau dashboard, and not both. But I have decided to create both dashboards for the sake of this exercise. The first thing I'm going to do is connect the Excel dataset to Tableau and inspect the connected dataset to see if there are any issues with it. So we have the exact same fields. The data structure looks to be okay. And we have the exact same number of records. Everything looks okay to me. Time to put together the dashboard. I'm going to open a new worksheet. Now, before I begin, I am going to set up my default properties so that I don't have to whenever I open a new worksheet. I want the revenue to always display as currency with no decimal places. I also want to remove the grid lines from the worksheets and dashboards. This worksheet will be used to create a chart that shows the total revenues per year. So in this case, I want the revenue to be in the rows and I want the order date to be in the columns. I want a bar chart and I want to flip it. I want each bar to be a different color. So in this case, the darker the color, the higher the revenue, the lighter the color, the lower the revenue. I want to hide this legend. I also want to hide the title. And let's call this sheet revenue per year. Next, I want another worksheet, this time to create a chart showing the revenues per month. So similarly, I want the revenue in the rows and I want the order date in the columns. This time around, I want it to be a line chart. And instead of years, I want to show months. I want to rotate this. I want to hide the legend. And I want to hide the title. I want to be able to filter this chart by the years. So and I want to include all the years. I want to show the filter and I want the filter to be shown as a drop down rather than tick boxes. And we're done with this one. Let me call it revenue per month. Next, I want to create a map chart that shows the total revenues per state color coded. For this one, I need to put the state field in either the rows or columns areas. It doesn't matter which one. Then I need to select map chart. And there we have it. I want to show the state's name on each state. And I want to use a color gradient to represent the revenues so that the darker the color, the higher the revenue and the lighter the color, the lower the revenue. And I want to hide the title. And there we have it, a map chart. 
I want to call this sheet revenue per state. I also want to know how the company's total revenues is divided between its three stores. In other words, I want a pie chart. For this one, I want the revenue in the rows and the store name in the columns. Then I need to select pie chart. And there we have it. The pie chart does look a bit too small, however, so I need to make it bigger. And I want to show the store name as well as the percentage breakdown for each slice. And I want to make the font bolder. Hide the title. And there we have it. A pie chart showing the revenue breakdown by store. Let me call this worksheet revenue by store. I want another pie chart, one that shows the total revenues by brand. So I'm going to create it the same way that I created the previous one. Revenue in the rows and this time brand name in the columns. I want to select pie chart, make the pie chart larger, show the revenue and the brand name in each one, make the revenue a percentage, bold the text, and hide the title. And there we have it, a pie chart showing the revenue breakdown by brand. Trek is by and far the largest and most profitable brand. Management will likely also want a revenue breakdown by product category. Now I can make this a pie chart like I did with the previous two charts, but there are simply too many product categories and using a pie chart will make the slices a bit too cluttered and hard to read. So what I'm going to do instead is use a tree map for the graph. So I'm going to put the revenue in the rows and the category name in the columns. Then I want to select tree map. And there we have it. For this tree map, I want each quadrant to show the category name, the revenue, and the percentage makeup of that revenue. So first, I'm going to put the revenue in the labels turn it into a percentage of total and then put the revenue in the label again, move it up and there we have it. Now I want the category name to be bigger. I want the text to be bigger than all the other text in each quadrant. So I'm going to click on the label, format, highlight this and make it 12 and bold. That looks better. Now I want to use a different color gradient. Green and gold will look better, I think. So color, edit. Let's go with green and gold and apply. And there we have it. A tree map showing the revenue breakdown by product category. I'm gonna call this sheet revenue by category. I'm also going to call this sheet revenue by brand. 
I also want to give management a chart showing the company's top customers. Let's put the revenues in the columns and the customers in the rows. Let's see the values. And I want to sort this chart from highest to lowest. Let's change the colors. And let's make it green. Let's change the title to top customers. Bold. And let's call this sheet revenue top customers. I can make this chart better by giving management the option of being able to filter the list to only show a certain number of customers. For example, I want to give management the option of filtering to see only the top five customers, the top 10 customers, the top 30 customers, and so on and so on. And I will do that by using parameters. So I want to right click here and then create parameter. Let's call this parameter top end customers. Let's set the current value to 10 and then click on OK. Next, I want to create a set using the customer field. So right click, create, set. Let's make the name top customers. And I want, I want to change the top to use the parameter I created earlier. And then OK. Next, I want to drag the new top customers set and put it into filters. And then I want to show the parameter. And there we have it, our filter. So with this parameter filter, management will be able to control how many customers are displayed by the chart. So if I wanted to see the top five customers, all I have to do is just type five. If I wanted to see the top 20 customers, just type 20 and so on and so on. So let's set it, let's make this default value 10. And that's it. Finally, I want a similar chart, but this time for the revenues per sales rep. Let's put the revenues in the columns. Let's put the sales rep field in the rows. Let's show the values at the end of each bar. Let's sort the sales rep from highest to lowest. Let's change the color of the bars to use a red gradient. Let's change the title to revenue per sales rep. Let's make it bold. Let's change the sheet name to revenue per sales rep. And we are done. That's it. That's our last chart. The next three worksheets will be used to create several components that will be used to form the executive dashboard. Here's a preview of the dashboard that I will be creating for management. It contains four sections. The first section includes a logo representing the company, a title for the dashboard, and an action filter that allows the charts to be filtered by the years. The second section provides a general overview of the company's performance over the years, using several key metrics as a gauge. The third section serves as another action filter, this time allowing the 
charts to be filtered by the states. And finally, I have a section for all the charts that I created earlier. Essentially, I want management to be able to filter the charts by the years, as well as by the states, and to have a visual of the impact the charts have on the company's bottom line. I need to create a worksheet for the year's action filter, a second worksheet for the state's action filter, and a third worksheet for the banner providing the visual. So I want to put the order date in the text, and then I want to change the title to select year. I want to shrink the title. And OK. Next, I want to provide a tooltip. Filter by. All right. Now let's try it out. Let's filter by 2016, filter by 2017, filter by 2018. We are all set. Let's call this worksheet year. And that's it. Let's now create a worksheet for the banner highlighting the company's key metrics. For this one, I want the revenue in the text. I want to double click total units. I want to also show the number of un the number of orders. Let's put that over here and let's make it count distinct. I also want the customers, the number of customers we've had over the years. So let's make that count distinct also. Let me bring that down here. Nice. I want these figures to be displayed horizontally. So I'm going to flip it. And I want it to fill the entire screen, so entire view. I want these headings, these labels to be shown underneath the numbers. I'm going to control, drag this, and put it under text. I want the numbers to be much bigger than the labels. So I'm going to go to text, click on this, highlight this, make it about 24, and then bold it. Apply. All right. I want to center the labels. So I'm going to go here again. Alignment, center. Sounds good. I want to change the title to summary of year. I'm going to bold it. Okay. I want to remove the heading. We don't need it. So we don't need the header. I want to now change the background color to blue as well as to remove this line. I'm going to go to format shading change the color to a blue. So let's go with this one and then remove this line. So I'm going to go to border, remove the row divider to none. And that's about it. Let's call this sheet banner. And we are done. The final worksheet will be used to create a title for the state's action filter. So I want to add state to detail. I don't want a map, so I'm going to get rid of this and get rid of this. I want to change the title to profit ability at a glance for state. So this state text is only a placeholder. I'm going to change it when I'm putting together the dashboard. So, okay. I want to get rid of these three boxes. First, by decreasing its size to nothing and reducing the opacity to zero. And that's pretty much it for this worksheet. Let's call it title. Now that we have all the charts and worksheets that we need to create a dashboard. It's time to create the actual dashboard. So let's begin. The first thing I want to do is to increase the width and height of the dashboard. Now 
Next, I want to add a vertical layout container to help me structure the dashboard. Let me add several blanks. The first section I want to build is the one containing the logo, the title of the dashboard, and the year's action filter. So let me add a horizontal container. Let's start with the title first. Let's make it bold and let's increase the size to 24. And let's center it. Next, I want to add the filter to the right. And I want to add the logo to the left. Let's shrink the, the logo and increase the width of the title. Okay, let me fix the height of this section. And let me delete this part here. There we have it. The next section is the banner. So once again, a horizontal container and we want the banner. Let's increase the width. And let me delete this container. And I'm going to fix the height of this section also. Next, I want to add the title section. So once again, horizontal, we want the title in here. Decrease the width a little bit and let me make it bold. So remember, this state text is only a placeholder. I'm going to change it soon. So let me fix the, the height of this one also. Next, I want to start adding my charts. Beginning with the revenue per year. And the revenue per month. Let's remove the legends, we don't need them. good. Let me fix the height. Now we want to add the next two charts, the map chart. Let's remove the legend. 
N D Next charts, but first let me fix the height of these charts of this section. All right, the next charts. We don't need this. We don't need this. We don't need the legends. Finally, our last two sections, our last two charts. Okay, so we have our our dashboard. All the charts are included. All I have to do now is to make the entire dashboard interactive. I want to start off by allowing the figures in the banner and the charts to be filtered or filterable by this year's action filter. And to do that, all I have to do is click on the filter element and then click on this funnel icon on the right until it turns white. Now, notice what happens when I click on a year. So if I click on 2018, the figures in the banner and all the charts change to reflect it. The same thing will happen if I click on 2017 and 2016. I can select multiple years by simply selecting one year, holding control and selecting another year. And if I want to reset the charts, all I have to do is
press the escape key on my keyboard. Now, I don't want this revenue per year chart to change whenever I select a year because it looks a bit funny. So I want to decouple it from the year's filter action. To do that, all I have to do is click on the chart and I click on this drop down on the top right here and I select ignore actions. Now notice what happens. If I click on a year, all the figures in the banner and all the other charts change to reflect my selection, except for the revenue per year ch chart. What I want to do next is to make this year text contextual so that it changes to reflect whatever year I have selected. So let me do that by double clicking on it and then highlighting the year, clicking on this insert button and then selecting the year option. Let me change this to four, apply and notice what happens when I click on a year. It changes to reflect it. So I have a summary for 2017, summary for 2018 and summary for 2016. Management should also be able to filter the dashboard using the states. And to allow them to do so, I need to add a states action filter to the dashboard. I want to add that filter to the right hand side of this section. To add the, to add the filter, I need to click on the map chart, click on the drop down, select filters, and then click on state. I want to then transform the filter to a single value drop down. Then I want to drag the filter and place it where I want it to be. Now I want to connect this filter to all the charts in the dashboard. And I am going to do that by clicking on this drop down, selecting apply to worksheets, then selecting the selected worksheets option. Then I need to tick all the worksheets that I want connected, in this case, most of them. Including the title worksheet. Let's try it out. New York. Yep. Texas. Notice how all the charts change to reflect my selection. And California. Let's go back to all. Now I want to change the title so that the state text is re reflects my selection. And I am going to do that by double clicking on it, highlighting the state, clicking the insert button, and then selecting the state option. Apply. Okay. Now let's try it again. It changes. So profitability at a glance for CA or California. Let's try New York. Let's try Texas. Looking good. Back to all. I want to make one more change to the title section. So profitability at a glance for all regions. Let's try California. Interesting. So for this one, I want this region's text to be plural when all these states are selected and to be singular when only one state is selected. And I am going to do that by using 
a calculated field. What I need to do is head to the worksheet that contains the title, create a new calculated field, give the calculated field a name, regions, and then write the code. So in this case, if count the is greater than one, then regions else or else region and so what I've essentially written here is that if more than one state is selected then use the plural regions otherwise if only one state is selected then use a singular region all right so okay Next, I need to drag this new uh, calculated field over the details and then head to the title, double click it, replace this regions text with a new calculated field and then apply. Okay, so now let's try it out. So notice how with all the states selected, it says region. If this thing worked, then if I select only one state, then this regions text should change to the singular version, region. Let's try it. And there we have it. So profitability at a glance for California region, for New York region, and then for all regions. That's pretty much it for this dashboard. All I have to do now is to tidy it up and give it to management for review. Management might want more charts, additional filters, who knows. But as with the Excel dashboard, it's better to ask than to assume that I have given them everything that they could possibly need. Let me change this title to capital. And just let me change this text to lowercase. And we are done. Time to save it to the online Tableau server so that everyone has access to it. Let's call it bike store dashboard. After making several off screen updates to the dashboard, this is the final results. You can access and play around with it by using the link provided in the description below.